AITA for not attending my friend's wedding at the last minute. I am meant to attend my friend's sister's wedding the weekend, two days from now. I have genuinely been looking forward to this. I have bought four different dresses, excessive I know but I couldn't decide, new shoes, bag and accessories, all just for this wedding. I was excited to celebrate the day with friends, and more selfishly, it was going to be my first time away from my young daughter. I love my daughter, but I was enjoying the thought of not being solely at her beck and call for a couple of days. My daughter has been ill since last week, she has had a fever, not eating and drinking and developed a rash and blisters on her hands, feet, and mouth. Yesterday I also became ill, starting with an incredibly sore throat and headaches and has developed into a fever and also blisters on my hands. I got an appointment with the local pharmacist and they confirmed that we both have hand, foot, and mouth which is highly contagious and was advised to have as little contact with others as possible until over the infectious period which can be 7 to 10 days. Yesterday I messaged my friend advising her of the situation and stating that I would not be able to attend the wedding, which I am really disappointed about. I also have messaged her sister, the bride, and explained and apologized also, and have stated that I'm happy to pay if they are out of pocket due to my absence. My friend has messaged me back today basically saying that IATA for it being so short notice, that there's nothing they can do now and they can't invite someone else and that she's incredibly disappointed in me and doesn't have words for me right now. On top of feeling physically ST from being ill, I now feel like a complete DK and feel really bad. I understand it's infuriating because it's so last minute and I would be a little pissed too if it was me, but it's not intentional and it's out with my control. I've done my best in the situation by offering to financially reimburse the bride so I don't really know what else to do. AITA. I'll add in an edit, the bride has not messaged me at all, and is not the one that is verbalizing discontent, it's my friend that is doing this. However neither the bride or my friend have replied to my latest messages which I am presuming, as my friend read my message yesterday without replying and only replied today, is them ignoring me as they have been online. Edit 2, I did initially have my daughter seen last week when she initially became ill and had a fever etc, however they told me she was just teething, which, coincidentally she is. I then further took her back this week when she developed her rash and blisters. Whilst there I expressed that I too was ill and was diagnosed with HFAM also. Comment. Your friend is being entirely unreasonable and ridiculous. What part of highly contagious doesn't she understand? It would be selfish of you to go ahead and join the party while contagious. It would put not only your friend but all of the other guests at risk. On second thoughts, send a message saying you've reconsidered and you will come. But ask them if they wouldn't mind letting the people on your table know in advance that you're highly contagious, so they can also organize to take 7 to 10 days after the wedding off work. And make sure to personally congratulate the bride, it's her wedding and it would be a shame for her to miss out on all the fun. Can't forget any musicians, DJs, photographers, or other staff, as well as everyone they live with or see while asymptomatic like partners, dependents, gas station workers on the way home. My cousin and her husband literally tested positive for COVID the morning of my wedding and opted not to come. And while I was confused that she wasn't there, didn't hear from her till a day or two later, I'm very glad they didn't come and infect everyone else. From what I've heard from the people I know that have had hand, foot, and mouth, is incredibly unpleasant and I'd be kind of pissed if I showed up at a wedding and someone at my table showed up with it and spread it to us all. My son ended up being hospital at least when he was six months because he spent time around his cousin who was sick but his mom hadn't kept him home. He was coughing and when I mentioned it someone said oh he's just pretending. He was the only person showing any symptoms at the time and then five days later my son was in hospital with complications. Also his mom could go on a night out. My son still struggles to this day especially during winter, he gets a cold and he's out for days with it. I always keep my children home when they are sick. Just this past week I've been unwell and so have the kids and my partner and I've stayed away from people. My mom rang me the other day and she's like can you take me to the store. I refused because I didn't want her to get sick as she already has compromised health. I said text me a list and I'll get it ordered online and delivered to your door, I don't want to go in a store and I don't want to pass this on. After working retail for years and catching endless colds and flu from being around loads of people I just can't be that person to spread germs when it's not necessary. Yeah, people get sick. It's unpredictable. It's not a dick move or inconsiderate, she literally just is sick. Also I've had HFM and it sucks nuts. The blisters were so bad on my hands that some of my fingernails fell off. I looked like I had some kind of biblical plague. 
I wouldn't go to a wedding in that state even if it wasn't contagious. Next story 2. AITA for planning to take my husband's last name after marriage. So over the course of wedding planning my mom has mentioned her feelings about me, 26F, taking my fiancé's, 29M, last name after we get married and how she's not happy about it. I am an only child and she wants me to hyphenate my last name and his instead. I haven't thought much about the comments because they are so few and far between, until fiancé and I flew to visit them for the past weekend. While staying with them, my mom brought it up again with my dad and I in the room while my fiancé was upstairs. She again expressed her wants for me to hyphenate, but I told her I feel that would be too long of a name and too complicated, it would be first middle last last. She said nobody would say the first last name anyway. But they already gave me a first name that is never pronounced correctly, even by people in my family, because it is a common name just spelled unusually. So I want to make things easier for myself and honestly my fiancé's last name is much more aesthetically appealing, but I didn't say that part. I told her I am considering making my maiden name my middle name and losing the one I have now, or just replace my last name with his. She hated the middle name idea because the one she gave me is also hers, so I would be losing a part of her. But, I've never been attached to this name because it is also a common name but spelled different, Renee spelled Rena. I said I'm tired of people constantly saying my name wrong. But she went on that losing either my middle or last name would break my father's heart, while my dad stood there silently, and guilt tripped me. I couldn't make the point that she took my dad's last name when they married, because her maiden name wasn't actually her biological father's so she didn't feel attached to it. I eventually left the room when the discussion was clearly feeling my way or no way. After coming back downstairs later with my fiancé, mom asked him if I told him about our discussion and he replied, about making her name long. To which she said so you're going to take our name right, which got her a quick haha no and after a pause he explained he likes his last name and is the only son to carry it. After this, she let it go and we all left to go shopping like planned but my mother gave us the silent treatment the entire trip and car ride until the return home. AITA4 symbolically crushing my dad's heart? Did they not think when they had a daughter in the US she would one day follow tradition and change her name? This is not something I ever anticipated being an issue. Comment. Until you start using no as a complete sentence, she will use the symbolically crushing my dad's heart or other manipulative argument as often as possible to push your boundaries. Parents who made their whole lives about their kids can really struggle when their adult children create an independent life. They are no longer in control or the first person the kid calls when they need advice. This is your decision. Not theirs, not even your fiancé's, you should hear him out if he has an opinion, but the choice is still yours in the end. The fact that they're laying on a guilt trip rather than respecting your choice really seals the deal that they don't have a real argument. Then laying on the silent treatment, just because you didn't roll over and do as she demanded? No. She does not have an opinion worth listening to. I'm not advising you to, or not to, take your fiancé's name, by the way, all of the options you have are reasonable and none make you an asshole, I just think the only person with the right to choose is you. You are old enough to get married, so you're old enough to choose your name. If she keeps bringing it up tell her it's not up for discussion anymore and since it's not her name she doesn't get a say in what you decide. Then tell her that if she brings it up again, you'll shut down convo, hang up, leave visit. It's your name, your choice. So sorry that your parents decided to give you a r slash tragedy as a first name when you change your last name after you get married, you can change the spelling of your first name as well. Lots of adults with tragedy names do this. Feminism is all about choice, and since you're the one who wants to change your name and not feeling pressure from others to do it, you should. You should do whatever you and your fiancé decide works for you. I was ready to take my husband's name, but he said, how will people find you? So for him, I hyphenated it. I now have the longest name on the entire planet. I don't regret it, but you would not believe how many companies and medical providers don't use the hyphen, so you end up with a bizarre mashup of the names. When I got married, I had initial misgivings about changing my last name as I'm the oldest of the oldest, means something culturally in my family, but I have a brother to carry the name. However, my husband was also the end of his line, and so he felt strongly about whatever children we have carry his name. I had a fake hyphenated name as a kid and I hated it, mom remarried and hyphenated her name, and then wrote mine on all the school forms as the hyphenated version, never legally changed it, oh the 90s. So I didn't do that route, 
but I also wanted the same last name as my children. So I eventually settled on putting my maiden name as a second middle name, and I am quite happy with that. My husband is happy, and it definitely makes life easier to have the same name as the kiddos. This is totally your decision alone. The only caution that I would have is that after my divorce and I'm telling you that I don't think you're going to get divorced, but as you get older it is so hard to change your name. After my divorce I wanted to change my name but it would be such a hassle. I started getting social security so I didn't want to get that messed up Medicare bank accounts driver's license insurance I mean everything. I just kept it it's too much trouble.